All right. Hey, everybody. Uh, my computer's a little bit slow today. But what I want to talk to you today about is this whole coronavirus panic. And, and yes, it's, it can be very dangerous, and we should be concerned to a point about this because it, it, it's, you know, it, depending on your age, your health, uh, it can even people that are just obese, you know, can be affected and, and you can get seriously ill and even die. But <laughs> what I want to show you is uh, on the John Hopkins website over here is that compared to the flu. OK, compared to the flu now. The, the, the similarities here are, you know, are pretty much alike. You know, the symptoms, they both cause fever, cough, body aches, fatigue, vomiting, and diarrhea. They can be, it can be mild or severe, even fatal in rare cases, and can result in pneumonia. The transmission is person through person, person to person through droplets in the air uh, from coughing, sneezing, or talking. A uh, possible difference is COVID-19 might be spread through the airborne route. Um, flu can be spread by an infected person for several days before their symptoms appear. And COVID is believed to be spread in the same manner, but they don't know for sure. Uh, neither virus is treatable with antibiotics, which only work on bacterial infections. Both are treated by addressing the symptoms, uh, reducing free fever, uh, of course, it, severe cases can hospitalize, hospitalization and support such as men, mechanical ventilation. Wow, can't talk. Uh, <clears throat> and then, of course, thorough hand washing, coughing into the crook of your elbow, staying home when sick, limiting contact with people who are infected. Uh, The difference is, it's called a severe acute respiratory uh, syndrome, which is, it's, it's a member of the SARS family, and it's caused by, the flu is caused by any several different types and strains of influenza virus. But what I want to get down to here uh, is, here are the infections. Okay, COVID-19, approximately... 153,523 cases worldwide, 2,508 cases in the U.S. as of March 14th, 2020. Okay, the flu estimated 1 billion cases worldwide, 9.3 million to 45 million cases in the U.S. per year. COVID-19, approximately 5,789 deaths Okay, 51 of them in the U.S. as of March 14th, 2020. The flu, however, and this is every year, 291,000 to 646,000 deaths worldwide, 12,000 to 61,000 deaths in the U.S. per year. Now, every year the flu uh, hits us, and er that, that's every single year. Let's get this. Every single year, you have, you know, 300,000 to over 600,000 deaths with uh, 12 to, I think it was 60,000, if I'm correct, 60,000 uh, in the United States. And, uh, but you don't see... Now, with COVID-19, that came out. Now you see this craziness. I was in Walmart yesterday. I had, I got my groceries. Three quarters of the milk was gone. Okay, I was able to get the two jugs that I wanted to get. I had to pay a little more. Okay. I wasn't running through the store like a madman. I got everything that I wanted. I had to go and get something, maybe a different uh, product, you know, I normally get mild Italian sausage, 
and uh, I had to go get those uh, uh, like bratwurst, so I got bratwurst. Okay, it's filled with cheddar cheese. That'll be good for my cholesterol. But the toilet paper aisle was <laughs> three quarters of it was gone, and here's the thing. Okay, water. If you have water, okay, I, I'm out in the country. I have well. I have good well water. Okay, but if you live in town, you can get a fairly economical filter to put on your faucet where you can have, okay, you got a lot of, uh, I guess, chlorine in, in the water. You can filter that out to where you can have pretty good water. You can even boil it. I guess I don't know how that works with chlorine, so don't decide. Well, I'm going to boil water, and then you find out that that didn't work. I, but, and if you have a problem with, I remember years ago my parents would talk about you know their uh, cleaning their backside after they took a dump and corn cobs. <laughs> They wouldn't have toilet paper in their outhouse. Now, you can't flush that stuff down the toilet. And, you know, yeah, it, it, you, you can't just throw that in your trash can because then, you know, you can get disease. But if you have wash rags and you have soap, you can wash yourself and throw it in your washer. Okay. So, but, but like I said, the flu comes every single year. And you don't see this madness when more people are dying from it. Okay, I'm going to go on another site. Now, that was John Hopkins. If you want to go over to John Hopkins, uh, let's see. what I'm going to, I want to go up to the top and see what it is. John Hopkins Medicine. Okay, now I want to go over to another site called The Conversation. And I want to show you uh, there's 10. Okay. The coronavirus, 10 reasons why you ought not to panic. Okay, number one is we know what it is. Now, they, they give AIDS as an uh, example. The first cases of AIDS were described in June 1981, and it took more than two years to identify the virus, HIV. COVID-19, the first cases of severe pneumonia were reported in China on December 31st, 2019. By January 7th, the virus had been identified. The genome was available on day 10. And, of course, it's part of the SARS virus. They know how to detect it. The situation is improving in China. 80% of the cases are mild. People recover. Okay, this isn't like Ebola. Uh, sometimes, I think, three days and you're dead. Okay, symptoms appear mild in children. The virus can be wiped clean, and you can use a solution of ethanol, 62 to 71% alcohol, hydrogen peroxide, that's 0.5%, uh, uh, sodium hypochloride, 0.1% bleach, so you can use bleach if you have bleach, uh, frequent hand washing with soap and water. Science is on it globally, okay? There are already vaccine prototypes, and antiviral trials are underway. Uh, so getting all worked up over this, you know, when the common cold can turn into pneumonia, and you can die from it. Uh, but... There's something else that I want to talk about here. As a Christian, uh, I know that uh, God doesn't take it lightly when we mess with Israel. He doesn't take it lightly, lightly when these countries want to have peace plans and all kinds of stuff and, and partition the land and divide things up with it for Israel and try to get the Palestinians and the Israelites to get along with each other and and all that. And I'm going to go right now to Genesis uh, 12, uh, verses 1 to 3, and, and show you what God says there. All right. 
Uh, Genesis 12, verses 1 to 3. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will shew thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Okay? That's Genesis 12, verses 1 to 3. Okay, now, I, I don't know when it was. I think it was... I think it was a year or two ago where I heard some guy say, this doesn't matter. That 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 doesn't mean that, that he's going to do that. Now, I, I think that guy was the problem. I think he was a kingdom now or a replacement theology type. But... You know, but the thing is, uh, this here, I'm going to show you this, and I did, I had this in, an, I had this in, I have a video where uh, I show uh, how the Middle East peace plan is not God's plan, and because uh, Trump, uh, a few months ago, I think it was last, was it last year, or was it this year that he, uh, had uh, Netanyahu, and uh, you know he was they were talking about partitioning the land. But this right here, that green, that's Israel. Okay, Alexandria, Egypt is right here. Okay, there's Cairo. So Cairo is almost uh, three quarters of it is is taken by uh, Israel. It goes all the way over here. Here's the Kuwait down here. Cuts off, this. that's Iraq, Syria, Jordan, Damascus, okay, here's Baghdad. It goes all the way up to Turkey. So this whole green area is what God gave to the, to the Israelites, to Abram, who's, who's, he became Abraham, all right? Here is Trump's Middle East peace plan. This green here, including this little line, if you can see it, and maybe you can't, uh, all the way over here, that's Gaza, this little bit, all of this is given. Now here, here we have Egypt, okay? Now, this here is a little, I'm going to go back here. Here is, right here, would be what they're doing, what they're doing here. Okay, this, and here's Jordan, okay, here's Jordan, Syria, so this here would pretty much be, and here's Syria, this is pretty much what they got, right here, just that little bit, and God doesn't take this lightly. Okay, Genesis 12, 1 to 3. I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. I'm just going to show you. This is from a website. Let me go up to the top here. Lamb and Lion Ministries. Okay. Uh, and they're talking about Hurricane Katrina here and the prophetic significance of it. But I'm going to go down here. Because I, I was looking for uh, examples of when we try to do peace plan or the world tries to do a peace plan with Israel and all of a sudden we got wars and we got pestilence and we got hurricanes and stuff. But I'm going to go over seven examples here, okay, of when there was judgment after that. Okay, number one is the Madrid conference, okay. It's a conference that they forced on Israel. It marked the beginning of the land of peace process. The opening of the conference on October 30th, 1991, coincided with the formation of the perfect storm. This was a record-breaking storm along our Atlantic sea coast, which produced 100 feet, 100 foot high waves and heavily damaged President Bush's home in Kennebunk Port, Maine. And the headlines of the USA Today on November 1st, 1991, had stories of the storm and the Madrid conference, conference side by side. 
Okay? That was not just, you know, didn't just happen. Round six of the bilateral peace talks is number two. That's 1992. Yitzhak Rabin was elected the new prime minister of Israel. We immediately insisted that he come to Washington, D.C. and meet with Yasser Arafat. That day, the day that meeting began, August 24th, 1992, Hurricane, Hurricane Andrew slammed into Florida with winds of 177 miles per hour. The damage done amounted to over $30 billion. Okay, it was the most costly hurricane in U.S. history at that point in time. This is the equivalent of God just, you know, I mean, pounding you. But these people in charge don't get it. Number three, Arafat at the United Nations. September 1998, Yasser Arafat was invited to speak to a special session of the United Nations that was held in New York, New York. President Clinton arranged a meeting with him to put pressure on Israel. As the meeting took place, Hurricane George's, or George, I guess it's, I don't know if that's French, <laughs> smashed into the Gulf Coast, costing over $6 billion in damage. Arafat and the Palestinian state, which was, okay, he, he proclaimed a Palestinian state May 4th, 1999, even though President Clinton later persuaded Arafat to postpone the declaration to at least December, the very day the proclamation was to have been made, May 3rd uh, in the U.S., May 4th in Israel, the most powerful tornado in U.S. history tore through Oklahoma City with, with wind speeds of 316 miles per hour, destroying over 2,000 homes. The Camp David Summit, July 11th through July uh, 24th of 2000. Okay? Okay. In, uh, at one point, there was, uh, let's see, sent uh, through, uh, let's see, central U.S. and western states, fires broke out, broke out. There were over 50 active fires that consumed over 500,000 acres before the end of the month. The White House Ramadan celebration, okay, which was November 17, 2002, President Bush. Um, a total of 88 tornadoes hit Arkansas, Tennessee, Alabama, Mississippi, Georgia, Ohio, and Pennsylvania. Okay, and then the Middle East Peace Plan in April 30th of 2003. Okay, once again. Over the next seven days, there was a total of 412 tornadoes, the largest cluster ever observed by NOAA since, and that was the national, uh, yeah, it's N-O-A-A, -A, not N-O-A-H. <clears throat> Here, I, I have it. It's, it's the weather website. Since it began the record keeping in 1950, the previous record had been 177 in 1999. So that jumped, that, that over double, it over, it was over double. Now, in summary, between 1991 and November 2004, you had nine of the 10 largest insurance events in U.S. history. Nine of the 10 greatest natural disasters as ranked by FEMA relief costs five of the costliest hurricanes in U.S. history, and three of the four largest tornado swarms in U.S. history. So, and then, of course, we have Trump's uh, peace plan idea that he had, and I'm a, I'm a Trump supporter, but I'm not one of those who just blindly follows him and worships him like people. He, I said that back, I made a video on the, uh, the whole peace plan, and how it's not God's plan. It, we're going to get, you know, this here could turn out worse than what it is. But, you know, I hope it don't. I hope for everybody's sake, you all stay safe. But we can't mess with Israel. Okay? And they're going to continue until one day that Antichrist is going to rise up and he's going to have a peace plan and then 
all hell is literally going to break loose on Earth. Okay? And if you do not believe in a pre-trib rapture or the tribulation, which is correctly called the time of Jacob's trouble, you need to read your Bible and 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 get right. Okay, get it, get it right because this is going to get it's it's going to continue if man don't wake up and start believing. Okay, in in, in the Lord. Okay, Trump. He the. They say uh, Trump's got these. Uh, I think what is it, Paul White, and I saw. Uh, thing where Kenneth Copeland was praying over him. Well, that is not good. None of these, th those two, I don't look at as, I don't see them as Christians. They're false teachers. And if he is getting uh, advice and uh, uh, direction from these people, you know, he's, he's going to go the wrong way. So pray for our president. Pray that he will start to heed wiser counsel from true born-again Christians and understand that, you know, it ain't, it ain't wise to mess with Israel. God has a plan. That was what he, Jesus preached in the, uh, the Gospels. He preached the kingdom gospel. That will be, you know, it would have happened then, but the people did not accept him, okay? When they found out that he had to die, okay, where, you know, you need, like I said, you need to believe Jesus Christ, you need to believe him crucified, buried, and rose again, and then you're born again, okay? They found out that he had to die, then that, that totally messed with their, their worldview, where they wanted him to, create an army, they wanted him to, you know, kick out uh, the Romans and everything, and they wanted that kingdom set up, and, and they didn't realize that he had to go through all that, the fin what they call the finished work of Christ, in order to get people born again, spiritually, okay, but when you come to the time of Jacob's trouble once again, you're going to need to become born again, but the, the angel will be preaching the kingdom gospel, too. The millennial kingdom is where God's going to set up the kingdom, and Israel will have their whole land back. Okay? God's going to do it. Man isn't. So, if Trump and all these presidents that come after him for however long it takes until uh, the... the you know, the end times come. I mean, we are in end times, but I'm talking about the end times uh, scenario. It's it's just going to be like this. We're going to have wars. We're going to have pestilence. We're going to have natural disasters, and it's going to get worse and worse. So, but I the thing is, I don't want people, I want to tell you, don't panic. If you're a born-again Christian, just pray. I'm not. I'm not in a panic. Now that don't mean that I. I won't get it. But the thing is, if I do get it, and if it becomes fatal, I'm going to be in heaven. And if you're born again, you'll be in heaven. If you're not, believe the gospel. Believe what I said. Jesus Christ and Him crucified, buried, and rose again the third day, and you will be saved. So. That's pretty much all I have right now, and I hope that it was a blessing. I hope that, uh, you know, it calms some fears and uh, that you have a better understanding of, you know, the coronavirus, how things are, are progressing with it, and also, you know, the correlation between all these bad things happening after we decide we're going to take control of Israel. And uh, I hope, like I said, I hope it was a blessing. And until next time, this is Kramer Unstuck.